How secure is your email in Microsoft 365? And what can you do with Microsoft Purview to improve that posture? Keep watching to find out. Let's start by setting the scene in terms of what the encryption options are for Exchange Online. Now, contrary to popular belief, Exchange Online does not encrypt messages automatically, but there are several options you can look at in order to do this. Number one is the one we're gonna focus on in this video, Microsoft Purview Message Encryption. This is built on Microsoft 365 information protection. It allows users to send encrypted emails to internal and external recipients. It can be triggered manually by users through Outlook's encrypt button or automatically via mail flow rules, or also known as transport rules. You then have the option for S-MIME, Secure Multipurpose Internet Mail Extensions, which provides end-to-end -end encryption and digital signing, requires certificate management, and it's more complex to deploy, and is best suited for organizations with stricter compliance needs. And then we've got TLS, of course, Transport Layer Security, which encrypts the connection between mail servers and ensures secure transmission, but does not encrypt the message content itself. So summary, no, Exchange Online does not encrypt all emails automatically. Yes, you can configure it to do so using what we've described here on this slide. And TLS is always used for secure transmission, but it's not content encryption. So with that said, let's dive in and take a look at how we set up Microsoft Purview message encryption. You need PowerShell here and you need to install the Exchange Online Management module and then import it as well. Just accept all of the prompts to do so and just keep an eye on the commands here as the recording I took of this went very, very quickly. Connect to Exchange Online once that module is there. And once into Exchange Online, you can get your IRM configuration to ensure that it's activated. And then you can actually test it with the sender and recipient, as you can see in that command line there. So that's all good. So next we need to go into mail flow and rules within the Exchange Admin Center. We can add a rule here. And what we need to do is apply Office 365 message encryption and rights protection to messages. We'll give that a name of apply purview message encryption, select this rule to apply if the sender is either inside or external to the organization, choose whichever suits your requirements. For this example, I will leave that as uh, outside the organization. And then you don't have to change anything there, but just select the RMS template, which will be to encrypt. And click on next, just review your settings, and then click on finish. Now, for reasons that I have thus far been unable to determine, when I click on finish, I am getting this error message. And for reasons even more less understood by me, I'm getting this on both the tenants that I've tried it on. So this is also something that you can do within the Exchange Online PowerShell. And I'm getting the same error. And if anyone can shed any light on this, I'd be delighted if you could tell me why. But you put in the new hyphen transport rule, hyphen name, encrypt external confidential emails, subject contains words confidential in this example, slightly different variation on it, and apply the uh, encryption dollar true, and we get the, the error. Very, very strange indeed. I've looked into this quite a bit over the preparation for this video, and it's told me to check my global admin or exchange admin or organization management rights, the role groups I've checked and double checked. I cannot get that to work on either of my tenants. However, the plot doth thicken because friend of the channel and recently newly minted Microsoft MVP Ben Thomas, congratulations Ben if you're watching, kindly shared with me his exchange mail flow rules and he managed to do this no problem whatsoever. He has the same licenses as me as far as we can see the same permissions and it worked just fine. And as we can see here, we have applied this rule if sent outside the organization and rights protect the message with the RMS template of encrypt. Exactly what I was trying to do and wouldn't you know it, it works. Really weird. So let's briefly go through a few articles that are relevant to this process. This is the one that I was working from to set up 
message encryption. And there are a couple of prerequisite steps that I didn't really mention. You need to verify that Azure Rights Management is active and it tells you what to do there. It'd be very surprising in these days if that wasn't activated, but do check it out as that may be something that stops you. Then verify the purview message encryption configuration in Exchange Online PowerShell. And that is a step that I briefly shared with you on my PowerShell sharing just a few moments ago, where I tested the IRM configuration with a sender and recipient address, and it passed that, as you can see here. So some good stuff. If it doesn't pass, if it fails, it gives you some instructions to connect to the AIP service module and follow these commands to make sure that it is licensed. So watch out for that as well. I mentioned that I tried this on another tenant and it actually wasn't activated on that one. So I had to do this. I had to connect to the AIP service module and activate it. It still wouldn't let me create the transport rule though, which is puzzling and frustrating me no end. So here is what we tried to do to find the mail flow rules to use purview message encryption. Uh, you can create a new rule or modify an existing one and select the apply Office 365 message encryption and rights protection, select the encrypt from the RMS template, select save and okay. And it should be as simple as that, but it had to spoil my fun. I will not be happy till I get to the bottom of that. What you can also do is you can do certain things to manage message encryption from here. And you can do a lot of great stuff like manage whether Google, Yahoo, and Microsoft account recipients can use these particular accounts to sign into the encrypted message portal. So there is a, a fair bit of PowerShell that you will need to familiarize yourself in order to configure things like this connecting to that Exchange Online PowerShell. These articles are really, really good though in showing you these configurations and what you need to put them in place. It gives you some examples here on how to set the OME configuration for allowing or not allowing social identities. You can set that to false or to true to enable or disable. And you can do things like manage the use of one-time passcodes within the encrypted message portal, manage the display of the encrypt button within Outlook on the web, whether that is there or not. Very, very simple indeed. And do things like enable server-side decryption of email messages for iOS mail app users. So some really, really cool stuff that you can do to control what users can and can't do on certain types of devices and so on and so forth. So a plethora of things in here. Ensure all external recipients use the encrypted message portal to read encrypted emails. So you can create a transport rule for, for that. And you can use a custom template for that. So a new transport rule in this example, give that a, a, a name. And then from scope in organization, apply the rights protection template and then put your option in and apply rights protection, customization template, and then the template name. Lots of very, very good and clear instructions there. So do take a look at that. I'll also briefly cover some of the advanced message encryption options as well that you can use. And I may do a further video on this at some point, but I don't necessarily think it's valuable at this point to to demo that at any great length. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that at some point. But this is included in E5. So you're gonna need that E5 to step up to the advanced message encryption. And this is gonna help meet compliance obligations that require some more flexible controls over external recipients and their access to encrypted emails. And there are three key things that it's going to allow you to do and I've got them all open. So the first thing you can add your organization's brand to your Microsoft purview message encryption encrypted messages. So it tells you all about what that is. Apply your company brand them to customize the look of your email messages and the encryption portal. And it uh, goes down and tells you exactly how you do that, how you modify a, a branding template by using the set OME configuration command lid. It shows you all of the options that you can put in place there. So, and gives you some examples there um, as well in terms of how to do that. So create an encrypted message branding template for advanced message encryption. So here's, here's the steps to create that new template. Use the new OME configuration dash identity and then give it a name. 
for example, custom branding template, and then return the default branding template to its original values. You got some nice instructions there on how to do that. You can remove a custom branding template also. Create an exchange mail flow rule that applies your custom branding to encrypted emails sent from your online organization to external recipients. So very similar to what I tried to do earlier in the exchange admin center, mail flow rule, select new, create a new rule. And then in the name, we type it in for the rule, such as branding for the sales department, and then apply this rule if the sender is located inside the organization. And then you might want to apply a particular branding template to all encrypted emails sent from members of a certain department or with a certain keyword, such as external or partner, and so on and so forth. If you've already defined a mail flow rule to apply that encryption, you can skip this particular step. This is really cool stuff indeed, and a lot of guidance in this document on how to do it. The other two things you can do are first set an expiration date for email encrypted by Purview Advanced Message Encryption, and it gives you all of the instructions on how to do that. You can use custom branding templates again to force that mail expiration by PowerShell. Shows you the examples there on how to do that, a new OME configuration identity expire in seven days, set that to that name of expire mail, expire in seven days, and then the values of seven. And really, really cool stuff. And then you can select that from the mail flow rules uh, in the rights management templates as we tried to select encrypt earlier in the drop down when setting up that mail flow rule. And finally, you can revoke email encrypted by advanced message protection or encryption rather. And this is offered as part of the advanced message encryption needing E5, it reminds you here. And if a message was encrypted using Purview and you are an M365 admin or the sender of the message, you can revoke the message under certain conditions. So admins can revoke the messaging using PowerShell. As a sender, you can revoke a message that you sent directly from Outlook on the web. And here it shows you how to do that. So what can you revoke though? Admins and message senders can revoke encrypted emails if the recipient received a link-based branded encrypted email. If the recipient received a native inline experience in supported Outlook client, then you can't revoke the message. So there are some very, very clear conditions on when and how you can do it and revoke that message either by the, the sender or by the admin. So do take a look at those. Be familiar with the things you can and can't do with advanced encryption as opposed to the standard encryption. Uh, get familiar with all of the PowerShell commands that you can use, like uh, getting the OME message status and setting and uh, that status as well, and so on and so forth. So there we go. That is the message encryption and advanced message encryption using Purview in conjunction with Exchange Online. So there you go, good stuff with Microsoft Purview in conjunction with good old Microsoft Exchange Online. I love that stuff. It takes me way back to my uh, Microsoft Exchange hybrid migration and tenant to tenant migration days. Actually, I don't miss those days at all. Anyway, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Please remember to subscribe as well. It's free and takes a second. And do hit the notifications bell as well so you never miss a video from me. This has been another video in the SC401 exam guide series. I'll be back with another one very, very soon, hopefully with a bit less PowerShell involved this time. But uh, hey, that's the thing with command line stuff. You either love it or you hate it. And boy, do I hate it. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. You all take care, stay safe, and do travel well. Bye for now.